In this video we're going to try to compare the new Smith & Wesson Bodyguard 38 Special Revolver with the Ruger LCR, another 38 Special Revolver. Uh, the reason we're comparing these two, uh, they're both the new polymer lines from both companies. The LCR has been about for well, a little over, a bit over a year now. And the Bodyguard, this is literally the first Bodyguard we got our hands on uh, outside of the trade shows. So pretty nice little revolver. However, um, I'm going to stop short of saying, you know, the ideal perfect revolver. Um, just to give you a little insight into my personal opinions, I'm a fan of U.S. made revolvers. Um, big fan of Smith & Wesson. I own multiple Smith & Wesson revolvers. I own multiple Ruger revolvers. Typically, uh, Ruger in my opinion, or to me, Ruger means solid, big guns. Smith & Wesson means efficient, defensive guns. So, both of them uh, have great reputations in my opinion. Uh, so coming into it, I have no reason to you know, not be impressed with either company. As far as the polymer revolvers go, the Ruger was of course our first experience with them. And there was enough differences with these that my first impression was what an ugly looking revolver who would want such a thing. When we took it out to the range and shot it for the first time, uh, that opinion changed immediately. In fact, um, seriously debating buying their new 357 version uh, as soon as I can find one available in a store. That said, they've come out with a couple of different versions of this Ruger, including this one with the big dot front sight, which I think is great. I'm a big fan of those sights, and I think for a defensive revolver like this, it's a nice option. I don't think it's a perfect option. Uh, the main reason against that would just be the, the, the high profile here which is required for a big open sight picture, but you can see that it becomes um, a deterrent to a smooth draw, potentially. So again, I'm not gonna say either one of these wins hands down over the other, but let's take a look at uh, more in depth at some of the differences. I'm gonna start with the Ruger because it's in my hand and because it was the first one to hit the market. We've got a plastic trigger guard. Basically, you can see the division between the metal part of the receiver and the polymer part. So the trigger guard, most of the back back strap, place where the grip attaches is all polymer on this one. The front is all steel. The cylinder, I believe is titanium or something, but I'm not sure on that. Definitely lightweight. Let's take a quick weight. The Ruger weighs 13 ounces. The Smith feels a little heavier, weighs 14.2 ounces feels a little front heavy. The Ruger, balanced very differently in the hand, doesn't feel front heavy. And it's just an ounce lighter, but something about the distribution of that weight makes this one feel very balanced in the hand. Where the Smith, because there's so little going on back here, definitely feels a little more front heavy. Take that quick comparison with the Smith. We've got a polymer trigger guard just a little different design. You can see that it sort of incorporates to the metal part of the receiver a little differently. But again, the whole back end, the grip, back strap and stuff are all polymer. Again, the cylinder on this one is more of a standard cylinder. Where on the Ruger, it's sort of a stripped down, scalloped cylinder, I guess. I'm not sure how to describe that. Again, at first, I thought it looked kind of ugly. It's growing on me now, but definitely in a different shape. Uh, now this particular one has the big dot sight option, but you can get Rugers with uh, just the standard sights or typical sights, I guess. And this one also happens to have a different grip. Now for me personally, I love this grip. It's a Hogue type of rubber, real soft, forgiving rubber. It's got a generously absorbent sort of back area here. And then more importantly, it's got these two finger grooves and a bit of width. So for me, this one just fits right in my hand perfectly, where this one is a little less, uh, it only gives me one or two two fingers, but uh, it makes me feel like the bore axis is higher. It's making me grip the, the, the revolver much lower. This one lets me grip much higher, and I feel like I've got a better grip on it. So two differences on the Ruger. There's actually more than this, but just to show you some, you know, the Ruger's been around for a little bit longer, so you've got some options. As far as the Smith, you've got the typical J-frame Smith-style grip. So there's not a lot there um, if we compare it to the Ruger. It's a little thinner, at least with this Ruger grip. About the same length. I think you can get a little bit more purchase. 
almost three fingers on the Smith. But because it's narrower, it actually doesn't feel so substantial in your hand. This one feels like it's going to jump, like it's going to be top heavy and want to jump out of my fingers. But because I've got three fingers on it, I don't think it'll be a, much of a problem. Um, I suspect, because I know how abusive a 38 revolver can be, uh, I suspect that without any padding here, this is sort of a harder, it's a rubber, but it's a harder rubber. It's like a urethane. Um, I suspect that a lot of that abuse is going to come right back into my hand. So I don't want to say anything until I've actually shot it, but I suspect this one might kick a bit more than the Ruger. Um, again, for me on this one, the top lever, the top button, uh, is just odd. It's weird. It's something I'm not used to. And I'm actually having a little more trouble with it now than I have in the past, but you know, I'm also looking at it through a camera. But uh, although I suspect it was designed to be ambidextrous like this, uh, I'm not sure if I like it yet. I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. Uh, as far as lasers go, we don't have the laser option for the Ruger to show you, but um, typically it would have a Crimson Trace laser grip, very similar to this one. Uh, the, there would be a pressure pad down here so that your your second finger there would trigger it. Uh, so that way with a, st a solid shooting grip you can choose with pressure on this finger whether or not to have your laser on and then that laser module is going to come out from here. And I think we talked about this in the other video when we talked about the Smith specifically but the difference would be that with the laser module down here this is going to signify your travel of your bullet or the path of your bullet and now this is to signify that laser light. If it went like this you'd be aiming off so at some point, and I'm exaggerating, you know that laser has to be at an angle like this and that can be a concern where with this one one advantage it does have is here's their bore here's your laser uh, you can really be a lot closer there has to be less of this type of an angle so for that reason this is in a good position however and I like Insight they're a great company for lasers and lights however the button is the weak link in my opinion having to bring your thumb up here and more importantly having to cycle through uh, isn't something I'm looking for in a laser. That's my personal thing. Again, if you're not familiar with lasers or if this will be your first laser, that might be less and less or even no concern for you. But for me personally, I'm just more familiar with a pressure activated switch and not needing to go through um, mode of operation in order to get it on and off. So I don't know if this is the best review. We've taken up eight minutes. I'll just finish it off by holding the two of them next to each other to give you a better idea of their physical differences. Neither one has any option for a light. Of course no safeties. These are revolvers. Safety in a revolver is the long deliberate trigger pull. These are double action only revolvers meaning both of them have internal hammers so as you pull the trigger it's doing two things while well, cocking the hammer and then it, it's also gonna do the double action of releasing the hammer or dropping the hammer uh, something else I thought was interesting about the two once they're open and we're gonna use the ejector to uh, remove those empty, cil oh, empty cartridges after shooting, the Ruger is sort of a standard size, but the Smith almost seems extended. So if we hold these two cylinders up to each other and then push those, see the difference, how much longer the Smith comes out? In my personal opinion, that makes a big difference. So again, you've got uh, the Smith & Wesson 38 caliber bodyguard and the Ruger LCR 38 caliber polymer revolver. Two polymer revolvers made in the U.S. Real well made. Looking forward to uh, getting some range time with the Smith. The guys and gals of GunWebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching GunWebsites.com.